Good morning. I hate to interrupt. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Mark. It um, must be Sunday because the weather is terrible. It's been that way for the last three weeks. People are slip sliding around town. Um, but we're glad you're here and uh, ask you to be careful. I'd like to read before I make uh, two quick announcements and introduce the opening hymn because we're going to be talking about St. Paul a little bit today. I would like to just read something from John Chrysostom. John Chrysostom was the Bishop of Constantinople. He died in 407. He, uh, and his name Chrysostom means golden tongue. He was known for being a very eloquent speaker. And he wrote something about St. Paul. I'm going to read just a part of it. Oh, and I should say, um, I, I came across this because yesterday was the, the feast day in, in the Christian calendar of the conversion of St. Paul. So that's why it just sort of happens we're going to be talking about him today, and I discovered this as well. And so yesterday is the feast of his conversion. This is what John Chrysostom writes. Paul, more than anyone else, has shown us what humankind really is and in what our nobility consists and of what virtue we are capable. Each day, he aimed ever higher. Each day, he rose up with greater ardor and faced with new eagerness the dangers that threatened him. He summed up his attitude in the words, I forget what is behind me and push on to what lies ahead. And when he saw death imminent, he bade others share his joy. Rejoice and be glad with me. Paul set no store by the things that fill our visible world any more than people set value on the withered grass of the field. As for tyrannical rulers or the people enraged against him, he paid them no more heed than gnats. And you know how problematic gnats can be. Death itself and pain and whatever torments might come were but child's play to him, provided that thereby he might bear some burden for the sake of Christ. That's what St. John Chrysostom writes about Paul. And so uh, we're going to talk about Paul a little more. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Scouts are here from across the lake, um, Saranac Lake, right? This is your annual excursion um, to the Green Mountain State. Thank you for coming. Uh, don't hold you responsible for this weather. However, isn't it true that Saranac Lake is often the coldest spot in the nation? Yes. Why is that? You're, <laughs> you're a proud people, is that what? <laughs> All right, we're glad you're here. Welcome, thanks for being with us. Uh, two quick announcements. In, in the pews, you might find these blue cards. If there's something or someone for whom you'd like us to be in prayer today, we invite you to fill them out. You'll notice on the cards, there's a place that says if you'd uh, like us to send a prayer letter. Those are letters we send to folks to uh, let them know that they have been lifted up in prayer during our worship service. So as we sing our opening hymn, or, or actually at any time between now and uh, when it says prayers of the people, you're invited to come and um, put, your, put these prayer concerns, we'll lift them up later in the service. And if you do want us to send a prayer letter, if the person is not in our church roles, you need to tell us where to send the letter, okay? So just make sure you give us the address on the back. And the letters will be uh, on the counter over here at the back of the sanctuary as we leave worship this morning and we invite you to sign them. You don't need to know the persons individually or personally to sign the letters, but just let them know that they were lifted up in prayer. Uh, I'm being told by the person who writes the letters that early is better. Uh, if you wait till the closing hymn, that becomes real problematic. So, uh, but feel free to bring your, those concerns up and put them in this basket. And then secondly, along the center aisle, you'll see red books, um, not mandatory, but if you'd like to let us know you're here, if you want more information about the church, tell us how to be in touch with you. Our opening hymn, 
This is the uh, end of the week of prayer for Christian unity. Interesting that we would be reading uh, in the lectionary from St. Paul today uh, and that we'll be talking about unity, what it means to be one. Uh, we're gonna sing a hymn, it's in the small black hymnal. It's number 2223, 2223. It's called, They'll Know We Are Christians By Our Love. Words will be on the screen as well. Steve, whose birthday is today, he's 39. And um, so we celebrate uh, his birth. He'll give us an, uh, uh, an introduction and then we'll stand and we'll sing together. Let's sing. So if there are any children who want to come forward, you can. You don't have to, because I'm going to share this with you whether you're up here or not. <clears throat> but if you want to come down, you can. And so uh, today we're talking about <clears throat> unity. And you know, um, sometimes when two people get married, you know what they say? They say they're going to tie the knot. The two are going to become one. And it's not easy to get along. I don't know if um, any of you struggle to get along with your friends or your parents or if you have any brothers or sisters or cousins. I don't know, sometimes it's hard to share. Sometimes we're supposed to love each other and we're supposed to be good to each other and we don't do it, do we, huh? Just a second, Catherine. And so um, we're supposed to be one, like this rope. We're supposed to be one. But sometimes, because we get selfish or we get um, mean 
or we're just not very patient, sometimes the relationships break. And so I'm going to cut this rope. I'm going to cut this rope in half, all right? And we're going to talk about it. Here's just going to, I'm going to just cut this rope in half. Sometimes this is what happens when we get angry or patient or mean or we're just, you know, we just don't, we just decide we're just not going to get along. And so we become like this rope now. We're just, we, we just gone our separate ways. What does it take when we go our separate ways to come back together? How do we, how do we tie the knot? Well, I could take the rope and I could just tie it together. Let's see here. There we go. Tie it in a knot like this. And now we've put it back together. Now, wait a minute. Let me ask you a question. Do we have one rope or do we have two ropes tied together? We have two ropes tied together. That's not the same as being one. You know, I mean, it's one thing to endure each other. It's another thing to really love each other and be one. What would it take for this rope to be just one rope again? Maybe a lot of, what? Get, <laughs> get a new rope. You don't like this church, go get a new church, right? Catherine, do you have a question? There are a lot of invisible things to see. But I want you to look at this thing. Because just maybe, if we're willing to love each other, and if we're willing to be patient, the two ropes can still be one. It's not easy to be one, but that's what we're supposed to do, to love each other and to be one, and I'm not going to tell you how I did that. Let's say a prayer together. God, thank you that you teach us to love each other, to be one with each other, not that we always have to agree, and certainly we're not exactly the same, but help us to be one one in our love for you, one in our respect and our love for each other. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thanks. You can go to Sunday school, spend the rest of the day trying to figure out how I did that, or you could just Google it. <laughs>
um, it goes like this. If you don't know this, we'll, we'll get a time, a time through this one as well. It goes like this. Weave, weave, weave us together, weave us together in unity and love. Weave, weave, weave us together, weave us together, together in love. Who knows that song? Who thinks they know that song pretty well? Oh, lots of people, lots of people. Uh, Boy Scouts, which of those two songs do you know better? The first one. Okay, so this half of the congregation is going to sing Bind Us Together, and this half of the congregation is going to sing Weave, like we just did. So we've got the idea, you know Weave, most people, at the same time. We're going to have some unity. Okay, so here's it. Ready? Here we go. Bond Eve, we Pretty and love We weave us together Weave us together So I played with this a little bit and then what I found out was they actually don't go together at all. <clears throat> it sounds terrible. Um, which got me thinking about unity and what does it mean to have unity. And there's a lot of different ways to have unity and, and to be unified. And one way is for everybody to do their own thing on top of each other. And sometimes that works really well. But sometimes that doesn't work well at all, but it doesn't mean that there can't be unity. Sometimes what works really well is for someone to do their thing and pass the baton to the next person to do their thing and then have it passed back and to have sort of to work in tandem with each other to create one unified thing where everyone is part of the body but not everybody is trying to be the foot right so so we're going to try this again you can all sing together you can all sing together let's try again here we go Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. We, we, <coughs> well, we're going to, let's, let's just, no, you, you're tricked. Let's get the slides going a little earlier uh, so we can see what's coming next. Um, but we're gonna, let's take the end of this. We're going to go into the weave verse from the bind chorus. I think we're gonna, let's just do the last, two li uh, the last line here. Bind us together, together in love. Let's get that next slide quickly, please. We are many textures. We are many colors. Ye one different from the other, but we are intertwined with one another in one great tapestry. Slide, please. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. There is only one
us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. I thought that made such a, a much better song to do it like that. Thank you. The first scripture this morning will be a reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. And I'm reading from Eugene Peterson's paraphrase, The Message. I have a serious concern to bring up with you, my friends. Using the authority of Jesus, our master, I'll put it as urgently as I can. You must get to along with each other. You must learn to be considerate of one another, cultivating a life in common. I bring this up because some from Chloe's family brought a most disturbing report to my attention, that you're fighting among yourselves. I'll tell you exactly what I was told. You're all picking sides, going around saying, I'm on Paul's side, or I'm for Apollos, or Peter is my man, or I'm in the Messiah's group. I ask you, has the Messiah been chopped up in little pieces so we can each have a relic all our own? Was Paul crucified for you? Was a single one of you baptized in Paul's name? I was not involved with any of your baptisms except for Crispus and Gaius, and getting on this report, I'm glad I wasn't. At least no one can go around saying he was baptized in my name. Come to think of it, I also baptized Stephanophis' family, but as far as I can recall, that's it. God didn't send me out to collect a following for myself, but to preach the message of what he has done. Collect a following for him, and he didn't send me to do it with a, with a lot of fancy rhetoric of my own, lest the powerful actions at the center, Christ on the cross, be trivialized into mere words. The message that points to Christ on the cross seems to sheer, like sheer silliness to those hell-bent on destruction. But for those on the way of salvation, it makes perfect sense. The word of God for the people of God. I invite you to pray verses from Psalm 27. The text can be found in the Red United Methodist Hymnals on pages 758 and 759. The words will also be on the screen, and we will pay, pray responsively. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in the Lord's temple. The Lord will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble, will conceal me under the cover of his tent, and will set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies round about me, and I will offer sacrifice in the Lord's tent with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart said, seek the Lord's face. Your face, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger, for you have been my help. And a reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 4, verses 12 through 23, reading from the New American Standard Translation. Now when Jesus heard that John had been taken into custody, he withdrew into Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he came and settled in Capernaum, which is by the sea 
in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. This was to fulfill what was sp spoken through Isaiah the prophet. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the wave of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who were sitting in darkness saw a great light, and those who were sitting in the land on shadow of death, upon them a light dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, as Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. In the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus was going throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among the people. The word of God for the people of God. So it begins, Jesus attempting to bring people together one at a time, two at a time, trying to teach them what it means to be faithful, faith-filled, what it truly means to love God, how to treat each other. You got to admire Jesus' optimism that he could pull something like that off. It was last Tuesday afternoon at Birchwood Nursing Home. There was a small group of people gathered in the activity office for the Methodist service. I go there on the third Tuesday of the month and Lil Venner faithfully accompanies me. In fact, sometimes she's there before I am. But I knew that I couldn't be long-winded because we bowling was gonna happen right after I was done. And they gather around for that. In fact, I think the reason that the people come to the Methodist service is because that uh, assures them good seats at we bowling. The text was 1 Corinthians chapter 1. St. Paul's modified rant with regard to the news that the Christians in Corinth were not getting along. And a gentleman in this small congregation of five or six people pointed out, you know, the challenge of Christian unity is as old as Paul and James. One believing that the gospel was for the Gentiles and the other insisting on the essential Jewish nature of the message. I got to tell you, that's not what I expected to hear from this group. <laughs> that kind of blew me away. Clearly, the person who spoke has given some thought, some consideration to the challenge of unity and to our long history of not getting along. Now, <clears throat> We're just going to take a minute or two today. Well, we're going to take 10 or 15 minutes, to be honest. But so often in the scriptures, we focus on what the scripture says. Today, I'd like us to spend a little time thinking about who says what the scripture says. I'd like to think about Paul together for a few moments because sometimes the character is as important as the message. You must get along with each other. You must 
learn to be considerate of one another. You must cultivate a common life. That's what St. Paul writes. In another place in the scripture, you know how St. Paul refers to people that he considered his enemies? He calls them dogs. I mean, so much for getting along. Uh, 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 the worst kind of slur that you could, you could refer to someone, and I'm not going to go into why, but there's another reference, right, in the Gospels where a woman says to Jesus, even the dogs under the table get the scraps. You dogs. About 25 years ago or so, there was a video that came out about the life of St. Paul, and this video focused as much on his character as on what he taught and what he wrote. And so the video suggests that Paul's writings emanate as much from his personal struggles as from his scholarly reflections. He waxes eloquent on the subject of love in 1 Corinthians 13 because he struggles to love, you dogs, <laughs> you fools. He struggles to love. If we continue thinking about Paul this way, then maybe we can speculate that Paul's frustration with the Christian divisions in Corinth are a reflection of his own opinionated approach to theology and spirituality. He's not just reading ancient texts. He's struggling to get along with people. And sometimes when you struggle, you're better able to um, identify what needs to be done, even if, you, even if you can't do it, right? How many times have you been in a situation where you've said to yourself, after the fact, I should have done, right? It's in the midst of the struggle, or when the struggle's over, you realize what should have happened. We know from the scripture that Paul comes to notoriety first as Saul, right? Because of his disdain for the Christian message and the early Christian movement and the followers of Jesus. Anybody who subscribed to the Christian message, he hated them. And so when instructed to go and guide the blinded Saul, remember his conversion, right? Ananias prays and says, wait a minute, I don't want to go help that guy. He's come to arrest us. His reputation is known far and wide. He hates us. The fact of the matter is, says Ananias, Saul isn't interested in, in getting along with anybody. Saul, in the book of Acts, is standing nearby when Stephen is being martyred. And just before he's about to be stoned to death, this is what Stephen says to the Jewish court, to the Sanhedrin. He says, you are a stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, always opposing the Holy Spirit, having received the law, but never observing it. Paul hears the Christian say that. At this point, Paul is still a Jewish Pharisee. And let me tell you, these are fighting words. These are fighting words. I see no reconciliation there. I see no hope of repentance. I see no desire to get along. And Paul hears that word. There's no love lost between followers of Jesus and the Jewish leaders on either side. They're attacking each other. They're calling each other. They're slurring one another. And this this penchant for antagonism would not disappear from Saul when he became a Christ follower. And that, my friends, is good news. When we come to Christ, we don't lose ourselves, do we? You know what? I'm stubborn and I'm not very humble. 
And you might think it takes humility to admit that. It doesn't really take humility, it just takes honesty because any of you who have come to know me, you already know that. And so if I stood up here and said, I'm such a humble guy, you'd be going, yeah, right. I am who I am. And so are you. When we come to Jesus, we don't, we don't lose who we are. Becoming a Christian doesn't erase our personality type, our habits, our preferences, our opinions. Saul, Paul, he was confrontational. That personality trait manifests itself over and over again in his writings and those who wrote about him. This is what Paul says about Peter. I confronted him to his face. I told him he was wrong. That's why I confronted him. <laughs> he was not an easy guy to get along with. That's why he is so in tune, in touch with the need to get along because of his own struggles to do it. I wonder how many times Paul walked away from a situation and had to ask for forgiveness. Jesus, I really blew it that time. How many times when he sits finally at the end of the day and he reflects, you know, I think I've shared before that sometimes my only goal in a particular setting is to get out of there without having to apologize. <laughs> I wonder how many times at the end of the day Paul just sat there and realized after the fact his own role in the divisions of the church and how he lamented it and how he understood at such an existential level the importance of getting along. Paul is self-aware and that's why in the book of Romans he writes these words. Why is it, he ponders, that the very things I know I should do, I don't do? Why is it, he wonders, that the very things I don't want to do, that I know I should not do, those are the things I do. Why is that? Are you able to be that self-reflective? Are you able to sit here today and to ask yourself, not what's wrong with the world, but what's wrong with me? What, what do I need to repent of? I had a conversation today with someone that I count, or not today, but this, this week. I count this person as a friend. And uh, they said to me, you know, I've struggled over the years. A anytime I get a new boss, I struggle. And uh, I end up, oftentimes I just, I just quit. And I've always blamed the boss. But recently, it has occurred to me, maybe it's me. <laughs> the lights come on. And then Paul, at the end of that reflection, I, I don't do the things I should. I do the things I, I, I shouldn't do. Then he says, I am a wretched man. I got a long way to go. I've got a lot of striving yet to do. I want us to consider the frustration that Paul exhibits in 1 Corinthians. It may be as much about his own struggle to get along with others as it is his conviction that the Corinthians need to get their proverbial act together. We need to get our act together. I need to get my act together. That great line from The Simpsons, Homer Simpson says, this is everybody's fault but my own. <laughs> right. I can resonate with this. I've, I've shared with people, you know, even on one of these Sundays, if, if, if none of you folks, if, if you all decided I'm staying home, I can't cancel church for two reasons. One, I can walk to get here, and two, my wife won't let me. I would come to church and I would preach this sermon, and do you know Why? Because I need to hear the message. I need to hear the message. And so if ever I say something and you think I've singled you out, boy, are you wrong. <laughs> it's me. It's me. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Last weekend, uh, Reverend Rodney Patterson 
preached here. And, and some of you know that Rodney is, is doing these four workshops on racism and, uh, and how, how, how to get along. He's, he's a great teacher and a great leader. Well, several months ago when we were talking about these workshops and, and we were talking about who's going to come and how we're going to get the word out, I said to him, you know, Rodney, I said, I really think that when all is said and done, the people who are going to come, you're going to be preaching to the choir. And he smiled and he looked at me and he said, yeah, I'm a choir director and the choir needs to be preached to. The choir needs to be preached to. You don't need the masses who don't know. You need the few who profess to know and convince them and inspire them what it is to live the truth of what they know, to walk their talk. It helps me to think that the one expressing frustration over the division and the sides choosing that goes on in the churches is speaking not from the place of having arrived, but from the perspective of one who is still very much in the struggle and striving. And so must we be. So must we be. We must work the program. That's my responsibility. That's your responsibility. As individuals, it's our responsibility. We must work the program. Yes, yes, we must get along with each other. We must be considerate of one another. We must learn what it means to have a common life together. Not because St. Paul says so, but because we know this is what Jesus commands. And do you know why Jesus commands it? Because it's what you and I most deeply yearn for. Let's pray together. For Richard Gunn, who is um, at Elderwood, formerly Star Farm, wishing he could be with us in worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Barbara Norton, a resident at Birchwood Nursing Home and a member of our church family, Lord, in your mercy. Prayers for my sister Jody, whose husband died unexpectedly this week. A wonderful husband, father, and brother in law. Lord, in your mercy. And for the Gibson family, Rob Gibson's father died this past week unexpectedly in surgery. For comfort for the family, Lord, in your mercy. Grateful for my beloved. Happy birthday, Steve. Lord, in your mercy. Help us today, God, to reflect on something that might go unseen, but that can be incredibly good news, that someone lifted up as a saint, someone hailed in the church across the centuries, someone who taught prolifically, prophetically, with such passion <laughs> that perhaps this one we call Saint Paul issues forth his wisdom, not only because he was a Pharisee and a scholar and 
an observer of the law, but because he was a striver like us. Maybe it's good news for us today to recognize that we too can be honest with ourselves, first of all, and with each other. And that the challenge remains the same for Paul undoubtedly <laughs> would be saying the same thing to us that he said to the Corinthians, get along. Learn to get along and be considerate. And yes, we sing it, let us do it, let us guard each one's dignity. Let us walk with each other with humility. Let us learn to forgive one another deeply. While it may be that unity among followers of Jesus has never yet been a reality, that is no reason for us to give up hope or to cease our labors, to do the spiritual work that enables that vision to come to pass, that someday the prayer of Jesus would be true, that we would be one. We're grateful for opportunities to worship, for the moments that we can pray with each other and for each other. We're grateful for the scriptures and for what they say to us, and we're grateful for the personalities behind the words their own striving and praying. And we're grateful that there can be a moment of unity regardless of how we understand what it means to pray in Jesus' name. Together with one voice we can pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to give our gifts and our tithes now, and as we do so, I'll, I'll, remain, I'll invite you to remain seated. We'll sing. It's number 632 in the red United Methodist hymnal. Words will also be on the screen. Draw us in the Spirit's tether. Let us give and let us sing.
Lord, thank you for all that has been entrusted to us, for resources, for time, for energy, for blessings in abundance. And thank you for opportunities to share, to be generous. And may our generosity uh, overflow because it is blessed by your spirit. Teach us not only what it is the work to which we're called as a church internally and in our community, but show us how to be about that work in ways that are faithful and fruitful. And so for what is given this morning and for all who have given, we ask your blessing and we are grateful in Jesus' name, amen. Um, some announcements. Adam, you want to say something about floats and subs and stuff like that? If we go to the next slide, there are some things. Monday, the thrift shop, Bible talk, rem a reminder on Monday evenings at 7 o'clock, if you go to the church Facebook page, Facebook Live, I do a Bible study there for about 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, Tuesday, I'll be at a clergy cluster, Ripple. Wednesday, church council uh, has uh, an engagement with Rick McKinley. Rick McKinley uh, is the head of our... Um, Congregational Development Office for the New England Conference, working with our church council and in March with our entire church to um, think about our ministry together. You know, last fall we did this profile where we talked about what do you want in your new pastor? And now this process is more focused on what are we committed to as a church? I mean, it's great to say we wanna do this or we wanna do that or we think we'll do the other thing, but are we going to do it? <laughs> do we have the time, the commitment, the resources, the energy, the faith? Are we willing to commit to what we believe we're called to do? So that's what this process is about. And that you will hear more about this in uh, the coming weeks. And I think um, that's all I need to say. So Adam. We're going to try a third time. I, the weather has not cooperated any Sunday this month but we are selling root beer floats in the back of the church. We're raising money for the youth to go to New York City in June to do some mission and service projects there and have a little fun as well. Um, it's by donation, so just come get a root beer float and give us, you know, a dollar, a hundred thousand dollars, whichever, somewhere in between. Uh, that amount will be fine. We are also selling Super Bowl subs. Next week is the Super Bowl, so today is the last Sunday. You can order one, um, but Fill out an order form if you'd like. We will make a sandwich for you uh, during church next week. And at the end of church, we will, you can, well, we'll figure it out. We'll either bring them up or you can come down or some of both. But we will have sandwiches ready for you. Um, those you do have to pay for, like there's a set amount. It's $10 for a half a one and $15 for a, a humongous foot long one. You can keep ordering them over the course of the week. Uh, Friday, staff meeting, 8.15 a.m., I will take all of the forms at that time and all the monies and then I will go shopping to buy all the ingredients. So if you have not ordered one via me or Pam in the office by Friday at 8.15, maybe 8.45 because maybe the end of the meeting, that then is too late. But please uh, buy some sandwiches. We're gonna have a lot of fun making them. I hope you'll have a lot of fun eating them. <laughs> Ripple, just uh, one reminder that we are going to the escape room this week. So we're meeting here at 5.30. Uh, don't be late. Sometimes we say, oh, come at 5.45, come at 6 o'clock. Uh, at 6 o'clock, we will be locked into a room not in this church, and we can't get out for an hour unless we solve something. So come right at 5.30 this week, and then, but we'll still meet here at church at 5.30, and we'll pick up at 7.30 like normal. It's just we'll be off-site. Anything else I should say? Um, is it? There's a I closing have, hymn? I, I don't know. Oh, there is a closing hymn, and I know yeah. what it is. I just, I just want to make one comment, too. Okay. Um, we knew that our accompanist that we have hired would not be here today. Um, <laughs> last week, she wasn't here because of the weather. So we were hoping that she would start January, well, the first Sunday in January, whatever that was. It looks like she will be starting next Sunday, which is February 2nd. Am she I got ready? the whole first month off. It's uh, pretty good. When not, you not with pay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. You can take as much time off as you need. But yeah, well <laughs> anyway. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm grateful to Steve oh, yeah. for having filled in. And, and it's uh, his birthday. We said that, yes. Oh, I was maybe downstairs. Oh, yeah, we did. We I'm setting up floats. We acknowledged it was his birthday. Well, He's good. 39. Our closing <laughs> hymn.
Number 114, many gifts, one spirit. It's in the red hymnal. Scouts, when do you go back? Like right away. Wow. Lunch? Oh, bag lunch. Um, are these subs? Or they're just sandwiches? White or whole wheat? They had their choice. Bologna? Okay. Okay. This is your 30th year coming to this church. Oh my gosh. Boy, I mean, the pressure is on. The pressure is on. Do you know, on April 19th, this congregation will celebrate to the day, the 150th anniversary of the dedication of this sanctuary. You're welcome to come back, but that won't count for next year. Wow, 30 years. God bless you. Well, thanks for, thanks for making the, the journey. Yeah, okay, all right. Um, you know, I gotta be honest with you. I much prefer conversation to preaching. But I have to stop. Let's sing. It's number 114, Many Gifts, One Spirit.
reminder to sign the prayer letters uh, on the counter in the back before you leave. Scouts, safe travels home. All of you, safe travels home. Careful in the driveways, you know, and the parking lots, as well as on the streets. Let's pray for God's blessing. God, you brought us together today. We got here. Whatever brought us here, because someone made us, <laughs> or because it's where we happen to be, or because we have been looking forward to coming again to be in worship together. Whatever brings us here, in the moment of our worship, we are united. And now, as we take leave of one another, still we are united in Christ, called to do his bidding, to be in love with this world, to be humble in our use of its resources, to be wise in our words, careful in our judgments. Bless us with this assurance that we will have what we need by way of your spirit to do what you have called us in the week to come. We ask your blessing on us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you. Let's greet each other in his name.